Hello, and welcome to the first of the, well, ultimately first of the guide videos, but this is more of just like an overview of changes and new shit. Anyway, Ark Survival Ascended has recently, I think mid last week, it finally released on PlayStation 5, so at this point now, it is out on every console available, except Switch, and I don't know if there's any plans for it to come out on Switch, I assume there are, but I don't know. In any case, PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, PlayStation all have access to the game now. There's only one map at the moment, being the island, until I believe March is when we will be getting Scorched Earth, and I forget which un unofficial map is coming first, and I don't remember when, but Scorched Earth I'm excited for. There's the Fasalo, so excited for that too. Anyway, so a couple of changes um, just that I want to go over for you. Obviously... The entire game looks different. Almost everything has been uh, restructured. We also have the fantastic addition of mods through CurseForge. Don't ask me any questions about CurseForge because I will not have answers for you. I apologize. But as you just saw, just click on the mods tab on the main menu here. And we currently, today, as of December 5th, have 44 pages of mods to go through. So that's already over 400 mods available on Xbox, at least. I'm assuming available on PlayStation as well. I don't have the game on PlayStation because I'm not going to buy it multiple times again. I'm not getting into that. Anyway, uh, there's obviously some featured mods as well. There is a whole slew of just fantastic stuff here that you can just browse through and look at at your own uh, discretion. I've already got some downloaded that I'm very excited to be playing with again because I haven't played with them since uh, I played Survival Evolved on PC. So, very happy. Uh, all of this stuff that I'm about to go over right now in this next bit is going to apply to single player games, yes, but also if you are hosting your own server through Nitrado, or just hosting a non-dedicated session, or actually it's only a non-dedicated session now, so. Uh, obviously, we have the first tab here for arcs, story arcs. Again, as I said, only the island is available. If you want to delete your save, just click on this icon here, and then obviously you have delete all single player saves down here for when there are multiple maps. Uh, I'm assuming that the option down here will delete all story arc saves and all modded arc saves as well. I don't have any modded arcs, I don't really care to get any right this moment, I'm just enjoying playing on the island again with all its new and improved beauty. Uh, left trigger, right trigger will switch us between story arcs and mod arcs. This is, we're going to call this the sub tab here. And then we have the primary tab up at the bottom. You can switch the primary tab options with left bumper and right bumper. Uh, arcs, just went over that. Mod settings here. This is just going to be this first page to the here that I'm on has all of the mods that I currently have applied to my current map. Uh, we've got a stacking mod and then all of the additions ascended mods via... or from Garuga123, I think is what his tag is. Um, fantastic mods, I recommend them to everybody who's playing this game. They're fantastic. There is three more creatures that are being worked on right now. One of them's getting a complete TLC done to it, which is the Acrocanthosaurus. I'm very much looking forward to that because it was my favorite creature from the mod in Survival Evolved, so very excited for that to be coming to Survival Ascended soon. Uh, down here at the bottom, you obviously have the Get Mods tab. It'll just bring you back to the mod page. Hit B, go back. Uh, deactivate Mod, just click on one of these and then hit Deactivate. And then you can also hit Mod Info to look at specific mod info for this. You got the total installs, uh, date created, last date updated. Uh, I'm assuming that's the, tw yeah, that's the 22nd of November. I don't know why I was going to say assuming. There's not 22 months. Uh, you got the file size and then what version the mod is on. The only issue I've had so far with mods is that if this says anything other than a number, I've had it say unavailable, which is self-explanatory, and I've also just had a couple mods that just have a couple dashes right there. If either of those are the case, the mod is obviously unavailable in one case, and you're just not able to download it until it gets updated again and it's actually corrected. Uh, additionally, you can just update all mods here with this tab. 
same thing right there. And then on the available mods sub tab here, select one that you want to use, hit activate mod, or you can just double double tap it here, which I'm not going to do because I already have everything set up the way I wanted. So, right bumper again onto the game rules tab. We've got five sub tabs here. Very, very self-explanatory for the most part. You can hover over each of these right here, and it'll go over everything that it'll more or less be accurate in what the description for each of these settings says. Uh, there's a couple notable exceptions. I think just one, now that I'm thinking about it. No, there's a second one. I don't remember what the second one is. Anyway, uh, first tab right here is for player-related stuff. Damage dealt, damage taken, food, water, stamina, drain, health recovery, harvest damage. All of these I just have at standard. You can change these to your own you can change them at your discretion to whatever you like. Creature tabs, same thing. Max count for creatures, I might increase that a little bit as well. I don't know yet, I haven't decided. Uh, damage creatures do, damage they take. We got food drain, stamina drain, health recovery, harvest damage, turret damage. Yeah, tur the damage they take from turrets is what that one is. And then you can also disable taming and disable writing. Also, I should say that if you're running a server on Nitrado, I should have said this before, sorry, going over all this, but if you're running a server through Nitrado, obviously you're not going to have this entire setup. Um, you're going to have all of these options. You'll have even more options than this, actually, I believe, but you won't have you won't have it easily like this, as far as I know. But I'm not using Nitrado, so I can't really help specifically with how to navigate that website. I just can help you with what all the what all the options do uh, anyway moving on we got structure so damage structures do so this applies specifically to the spiked walls and i think that's it right now uh presumably in the future there will be more uh structures that just do damage themselves turrets don't count i can't think of any other structures that do damage themselves though i'm i'm sure there is some i just can't think of what they would be Maybe bear traps, but I guess I don't think that would actually count. Because those are like trap tools. Anyway, uh, resistant damage structures take uh, can be increased, decreased at your will. Damage repair cooldown, how long you have to wait before you can actually repair a structure. And then the structure placement collision just makes it easier to put stuff down. You can clip it into terrain a little bit. Um, it's not to the extent that S+, plus, the S+, plus mod, or structures or superstructures mod would let you uh, clip structures into the terrain, but it's better than not having it at all. Uh, world tab here, general XP multiplier. So there's a couple XP multipliers as well. And this one right here is just general XP. This applies to just all of the experience gain. Uh, you got taming speed, harvest yield multiplier. The only thing I can mention about the harvest yield multiplier is that don't put that setting too high because it will start to lag your game if you do. Um, so I just have it set to 5. It's perfectly fine for just a normal, like, casual playthrough. It's faster than the vanilla settings of the game, but it's not insane. Um, also, so by default, the speed leveling of both players and all creatures is completely disabled. So if you're playing on a official server, you're not able to increase your movement speed on either your player or any kind of creature you get, doesn't matter what it is. You also don't get the imprinting buff for it either. The plus side to this is even with both of these settings turned on so that you can level up speed for both your player and for creatures, um, wild creatures do not get any points put into their movement speed so there's no wasted points for any creatures and from what i've seen so far as well creatures that use or that don't use oxygen like the baryonyx or the frog uh, they don't have points put into their oxygen stat either so if they don't have a stat that actually matters or if they have a stat that doesn't matter to them it doesn't have any points put into it while they're a wild dino it just goes into the points that actually mean something so that's very nice it's a very nice very helpful touch to uh, the game. Alright, uh, maximum difficulty and difficulty level. Uh, maximum difficulty, as it says here, will force creatures to level 150 at the max. The way the difficulty system works in ARC, ignoring this choose difficulty tab down here, I'll go into that in a moment. 
Um, but the way the difficulty setting for Ark works is that it applies only to creatures, and it's a bit unclear on if it applies to how difficult bosses are as well. Um, I don't know if those are just a set difficulty, or if they just scale with the uh, level of the creatures you have on the map. Anyway, the way wild creatures spawn at like what levels they spawn, it they will spawn between level 1, between level 1 and level 30, and then that level, whatever level it will be, will be multiplied by whatever difficulty setting you have. So if you're on difficulty 1, you'll have, uh, say, a level 3 creature. It'll only spawn at level 3. Uh, lowest, di lowest level for difficulty 1 will be level 1, and then the highest level will be level 30. Likewise, for difficulty 5, which maximum difficulty is, uh, lowest level for any wild creature will be level 5, and then highest level will be level 150. Whew. I need to breathe when I talk. Uh, PvE mode, PvP, PvP mode, very self-explanatory. Just do with that what you will. There's more settings specific to each mode that we'll get to in just a second. Hardcore mode. Um, if you have this turned on, when you die as a player character, when your player character dies, you will be unable to respawn and will be forced to create a new character. Any structures or tames that your previous, now deceased, character had will be unavailable to you unless you had structures or whatnot uh, set with a pin code so you can still access them later. Um, and then unlimited respects effect is the uh, mind wipe tonic. It will allow you to use it as many times as you want uh, without without limit. Um, normally, by default, you can use the mind wipe ton tonic once per level. Um, so if you use the mind wipe tonic tonic at level 100. Um, it'll bring you back to level 1, you'll have all 99 levels you can put back into your stats however you want, but once you get back to, to level 100, you won't be able to use another Mind Wipe Tonic until you hit level 101. Um, yeah, and that's it for right here. So general rules, third person camera, global voice chat, proxy chat, player join, left, admin login, crosshair. Crosshair is an important one that's, that I do have turned on, self-explanatory. Uh, tribute downloads, survivors, dinos, items, actual tributes. Uh, just lets you transfer stuff between between arcs, so or between maps, I should say. Uh, Non-dedicated tethering distance. So this is how far, if you're hosting a non-dedicated session, this is how far away from you, the host, other players can get in your game. So I, I haven't actually played with anyone else yet, because just no one... Well, specifically, my siblings don't have this game yet, so I don't really know exactly how this works. I have it set to 10,000. I think the default was like 1,000. I don't remember. Uh, PvP Gamma. Honestly, Gamma's not really needed. So far, even at nighttime, the game's still pretty bright, and it's very nice. Show Creative Mode just enables Creative Mode, disable Loot Crates, disable Friendly Fire, and then use Single Player Settings. Both of these two are self-explanatory. The Single Player Settings are just... If you have it turned on, it's just a preset of a bunch of settings from taming speed, harvest rates, breeding settings, everything that's just clumped into one little option for you. Um, I don't use it just because I like to customize all my own stuff, and it it's just it's just personal preference. Um, if you want to use single player settings, by all means, do so. I don't know specifically what the specific settings are changed to if you have it turned on, but. It's meant for if you're just a lone player, just playing by yourself. So, do with that what you will. So, we have the advanced tab here as well. General PvE settings, timer, uh, just un temporarily switches the game to PvP for just a, whatever amount of time you set it to. Use system time, that just relates to this. <laughs> tribe alliances, tribe war, tribe war cancel. Self-explanatory, disable gamma. Obviously, I'm not going to mess with that, but I can if I really want to. Uh, I have cave building turned on. By default, it is turned off on PvE, and I believe PvP, the default, is turned on. Uh, structure decay, dino decay, etc. 
Flower Carry I have turned on. For PvE, it is turned off by default. So uh, any flyer you're riding, trained on Argentavis, cannot pick up creatures or other players by default. Extra structure prevention volumes will. Uh, um, it'll prevent you from building around any area that has just a mass amount of natural resources or natural valuable resources like metal, crystal, obsidian, stuff like that. So the volcano, that mountain next to the volcano, which my friends and I always called Obsidian Mountain, um, Giga Mountain as well, uh, the one south, like southeast of the Hidden Lake on the top right corner of the map, roughly. Uh, those areas you wouldn't be able to build on if you had this setting turned on. No diseases, only affects Swamp Fever. I don't know if it affects me Mega Rabies either, um, but I have it turned off for just... Actually, I'd, I always have it turned off. Non-permanent diseases, normally, when you have Swamp Fever, uh, if you die, you'll still have it when you respawn. If you have this setting turned on, though, when you die, you'll lose the status. And then allow cave flyers is very self-explanatory. Uh, PvP settings here, not really applicable to me. I don't ever really play PvP here on, on Arc just because I generally don't have the time to commit to a PvP game. Um, but the settings are pretty self-explanatory. You look through them if you want. If you're playing a... If you're hosting a PvP server yourself, I'm not really the person to ask for what settings are best for, for PvP. Wrong button. Uh, general world settings right here. So day cycle speed, day and time speed, and nighttime speed. If you have the day cycle speed increased or decreased, um, so say you have day cycle speed increased to two, the both the day and nighttime speed will be twice as fast. However, if you have the daytime speed set to two and the nighttime speed set to one, like this, and then day cycle speed also set to one, only the daytime speed will increase, and then it'll be a slower, uh, a, a slower or longer nighttime. However, these do stack. So if you have day cycle speed set to two and daytime speed also set to two, the daytime is going to be a total of four times as fast as it as it normally is by default. Uh, an override initial time of day, I have my initial time of day set to 6 in the morning. By default, it is set to 10. You can change this if you really want to, it doesn't really matter very much, I just thought 6 was a better time and I like it. Spoiling time, item decomposition time, affects the spoiling timer on any consumable item. Uh, and this one is for dropped items that you either, like, drop bags, if you like hit drop all from your inventory, or if you just like throw an item on the ground, how long those will stay in the world before disappearing. Uh, and this one is for corpses, so dead bodies of creatures or for players. Ugh. I had to yawn and it got stuck. Anyway, uh, no resource radius and no resource radius for both players and structures. It's just how far away uh, from either the player or from structures stuff has to be before it'll respawn and you can harvest those resources again so there will be kind of like a quote unquote dead zone around both you and any structures you build it's why you don't get like trees and rocks respawning in the middle of your base or inside of like your structures um harvest health applies to rocks trees bodies Anything that you harvest with a tool or with a dino. Um, this one, you can really put it as high as you want. The higher it is, the longer it'll take to actually break a resource, and likewise, the more resources you're going to get from that specific node. Uh, response, resource respawn interval is how fast those resources will return once you're out of the area. Similarly, crop growth speed and decay speed it's just how fast they grow and how fast they decay. Poop interval, mating, mating interval, lay egg interval, self-explanatory. Egg catch speed is how fast an egg will incubate or how fast a gestation for a mammal will uh, progress. And then on the other side here, we've got baby mature speed is just how fast baby creatures will grow up. 
What was that? That was nothing. Uh, imprint buff, buff, imprint buff is the extra, like, I think it's a 20% bonus to all of a creature's stats at a full 100% imprint. You can turn that on and turn it off if you want. Um, anyone can baby imprint. Cuddle is normally when you imprint on a baby dino, only the person who imprinted on it can do the actual imprinting on it, or only the person who claimed it can do the imprinting on it. With the setting turned on though, anyone in your tribe can do the imprinting on it. Uh, food consumption speed. I'm leaving it just at one for now. I haven't actually done any breeding yet. Um, but a lower number. Yeah, okay, so this, what it says right there, is incorrect. It says higher numbers mean that baby dinos eat their food more slowly. No, you want a lower number for them to eat more slowly. Same thing for the cuddle interview right here. It says higher numbers mean players will need to come cuddle with the baby more frequently. That is incorrect. You want lower numbers. Uh, grace period, lose imprint, uh, speed. Both of those apply to specifically how long you can wait on an imprinting before the other goes down. So say a baby wants a cuddle or wants to go on a walk right away, you do that right away, you'll get, say, 10% imprinting quality. However, if you wait for too long, that imprinting quality will start to go down to 9%, 8%, 7%, etc., etc. Um, this is just how fast that speed goes down, or how, how long it takes for that speed to start going down. Actually, it's both. I don't remember which is which, though. Oh, it kind of explains it. Anyway, uh, imprint stat scale is just how much stats get increased. I think by def default, it's either a 10% increase or a 20% increase. I don't honestly remember. Off the top of my head, I never really checked. Uh, the wild dino subtab here is just stat multipliers for wild dinos. Obviously, not touching any of those. Uh, higher numbers mean higher stats, lower numbers mean lower stats, self-explanatory. Tame dinos, it is the same thing. Um, oh boy. Let's see. Alright, if I remember this correctly, the stats per level I'm 100% certain on, this is how much of each stat a creature will get when you put a level into whatever stat that is. So by default, these are everything but speed on the stats per level is the default settings for, I believe, even official servers. So 0 0.2 for health, 0 0.17 for damage, and then one for everything else across the board. Those are the default settings for everything. Um, the only one I have increased is speed just because I like to get around the map at a reasonable speed uh, you can put it to whatever you want though uh, add a per level is the taming bonus I believe I don't know what stats stat affinity is but add a per level is when you tame a dino it'll get like if you tame a 150 dino and you do it perfectly it'll get an extra 74 levels when it's fully tamed so it'll go up to level 224 I think so of those levels, this will increase. Of those levels, they'll be randomly distributed between the creature's stats that it has available, minus movement speed or oxygen, if it's something that doesn't use oxygen. Um, and this just increases or decreases how much, uh, how much those stats actually go up. And then I don't really know what stats affinity does. I haven't really figured that out. Uh, player sub tab here is just the same thing. Uh, you can check out the, uh, well actually I can just tell you. So health, stamina, food, water, weight, um, all increase by 10 by default. Oxygen increases by 20. Speed by default increases by 1.5. Fortitude by 2. Torpidity you can't do anything with. Temperature temperature you can't do anything with either for players because that's just fortitude I don't know why that's there um, and then damage increases by 5% I believe um, XP multipliers this is just a more in-depth 
breakdown of all of the different types of XP you can get. So generic, just over time experience, uh, experience from harvesting creatures or resources, experience from crafting, from getting explorer notes. I don't know what applies to special experiences. Uh, from killing creatures, killing boss creatures, alpha creatures, cave creatures, wild creatures, tame creatures, unclaimed creatures. So many different types of creatures, jeez. So kill is just generic killing of everything, and then all of the specific types of killing you can do. And yes, the kill and the specific type of creature kill does stack. So if it's two for normal kills, and then two for wild creature kills, wild creature kills is a total of times four. Um, and that's it right here. Misc is just general miscellaneous stuff. Uh, flying platform, unaligned basing. These three, max players and tribes, self-explanatory, just limits how many people can be in the same tribe. Max player XP and creature max XP. I don't touch because I'm not too sure how they work. Someone smarter than me could probably explain it better. Because I don't think this increases the levels that you can get, because you'll still go up to level 105 by default. Uh, flyer platformed unaligned basing, so... Um, how do I explain this one? Something like a Quetzal or a Bronto with a platform saddle, by default, anyone not in your tribe or not uh, an ally of your tribe cannot stand on your uh, Dino's platform saddle, they'll just slide off of it onto the ground. Uh, turn that on and anyone can stand on it. <sighs> Why am I yawning so much? Jeez. Uh, passive defenses hurt, rhino hurt riderless dinos, just enable if spike walls will damage wild creatures or creatures without a, wi without a rider. Only specific engrams, you can turn on and off what engrams you want to be learned, or you want to be available. Raid Dino Fino feeding uh, will prevent the Titanosaur from starving to death. I don't know if it affects if you can keep the Leopold on when you tame it as well, but at least by what this says, it doesn't look like it does, but not all of these descriptions are fully accurate. Raid Dino food drain, just how fast the Raid Dino's food drains, obviously. Uh, photo mode is fantastic. It's a new feature in the game. This is how far the photo mode uh, can the photo mode camera can go from your player. Custom recipes on or off. I don't know how to do custom recipes. What was that? I think my cat's just knocked over something. Awesome. Uh, recipe effectiveness. How? effective they are. I've never messed with any custom recipes before. Uh, crafting skill bonus is just how how much of an increase uh, items crafted from blueprints will improve. Uh, supply crate loot, fishing loot, just increase how... It says increase the quality, but it's kind of hard to tell if that's just like giving you more stuff or giving you better stuff or better quality stuff. So it's it's either the difference between getting like a pump action shotgun, like a primitive pump action shotgun versus a primitive just like double barrel shotgun or the difference between getting a primitive shotgun versus like a apprentice shotgun or something. So I don't know which one exactly that is. I'm assuming it just gives you higher quality stuff. So like an apprentice where you would normally get a primitive. Uh, multiply platform structure limit that implies to platform saddles and to rafts. And then this is just floating damage so you can see how much damage you and your creatures are doing. Next main tab is just the engrams. I didn't mean to I didn't mean to back out of that. Uh, you can just double tap on any of these to get rid of any of them that you want or to disable them. Um, and that's it, really, for this. The other thing that you can do is the Choose Difficulty tab. I'm not going to click it because it'll mess up all of the settings that I already have. Um, but if you select it, it'll, it'll change all of these settings here to a preset uh, set of settings between an Easy Difficulty, Medium Difficulty, and Hard Difficulty. 
Um, check those out at your own discretion. It's kind of cool, but the it it's hard to explain. Actually, no, it's not because I'm thinking about it now. Uh, obviously, hard difficulty kind of lowers. Uh, how much resources you get increases taming time, increases damage dealt to you, decreases how much damage you do, stuff like that. Um, and that's really everything that I can explore, explore, explain here on the menu. There's a couple stuff I want to explain in uh, in game though. There has been a couple of bugs as well that I've encountered with the game. Um, two specifically that I can think of right now. Three. Three specifically that I can think of right now, I lied. So, here we are. Hold on, I have to enable creative mode again so I can actually walk. So, just here on Herbivore Island, I have a handy dandy test subject here. Hi. So, the only dino related thing that I've noticed so far, besides just like the fantastic cleaned up textures and whatnot, they everything looks gorgeous. I love making the berry yell. Anyway, um, if you hold the select button, you can go up to toggle, change dyno camera, hover over it, and then hit right trigger. And then left bumper and left trigger. You can zoom in and out, and you can do this for every rideable dyno. You can change how close the uh, uh, camera is while you're riding a dyno. It is a fantastic addiction. Ad ad addiction? And I'm very happy with the experience. And then just go back to it and disable it the same way you activated. So that's all I got right there for you. The other thing. So there's been a lot of changes to the building system. It's been, I won't say completely re revamped, but it's been massively improved. So for starters, we got just a general foundation. So foundations like this. And I'm assuming tri triangle foundations as well, and then pillars that I've got set up over there. You can set it down, and then using the right stick, you can change the height of it like this. And then obviously you can still rotate it to whatever degree you want. And then I've got one all the way up right there. So there you go. There's those, just for fun. Um, additionally, for all structures, I'll just leave that for there for a little bit um, let's see, other structures. So we got walls right here. So no longer is there a separate engram for walls, door frames, windows, and uh, double door frames, and then some new building structures. All of those are just condensed into one um, engram. So the wall engram here, press X or I think square or circle the equivalent button on PlayStation 5. I don't know what the key would be on PC, so I'm sorry, but it tells you at the bottom there uh, above your hotbar. And you can switch between the... Uh... Oh, wow. There's the uh, stone short doorway, which is just the normal doorway, just the standard. No. So short doorway is new. Stone doorway is the original one. And then double doorway as well. And then we got the window, and then we have a new one, which is the secret door. And then it just opens like that. It's a very, very nice new addition. Another thing that has changed with the building is all structures, as long as they're not damaged, can be picked up at any point. And that is making building so, so much easier. Additionally, let me uh, do this really quick. So pillars, specifically, you can put sideways now, however you want them, and it is fantastic. There we go. There, and we'll just leave that there for right now. I got some nice abstract art there. I'll go back to that in a second. So there's the pillars. We have a new structure, which is the stone quarter wall, which you can also change to a railing. So this is where the railing is, and then you just have, obviously, a quarter wall. Very nice little new structure addition. We have the quarter ceiling as well, uh, which can change... No, hold on. 
can change to the triangle ceiling. Uh, let's see, the normal ceiling as well, you can change between the ceiling, the hatch frame, and the reinforced cellar door, which is like a giant hatch frame, but just one block. So, that's cool as well. Uh, let's see, what other ones? I already did that one. So we have the fence foundations here as well. It's got the nice arrows. The, the arrows for which way stuff is facing is much, much clearer than it was in Survival Evolved as well. Um, and then on this same little building piece, we have the fence foundation, or the fence support, I mean, as well. So that's uh, very nice. We also have the uh, dinosaur stone gateway here. The cool thing about all of these structures now is that all of them can snap pretty much with each other without much limit. So you can do all kinds of fantastic builds, and it is wonderful. So there, there's my little other piece of abstract art. The other building thing is that if you, when you're demolishing a building... That was the wrong one. I forgot I put two. When you're demolishing a building, if you want to just demolish everything right away, you no longer have to go and pick up every single piece one by one so that you don't destroy anything. You can just go to the foundation pieces, and once you pick it up, it'll pick up everything that's supported by that foundation piece. Um, it is a very, very fantastic thing, so if you're... And it applies to crafting stations or anything... It applies to anything that's being supported by that foundation or that pillar or whatever or whatever it may be. If you pick up the foundation, anything that's relying on that to exist in the world will get picked up as well. So industrial forge, fabricator, smithy, none of that stuff is going to get ac accidentally destroyed if you pick up the foundation below it by accident. Um, let's see... So, aside from the building overhaul, there's been, obviously, a lot of changes to just the environment. It, not even including the dinos, just all of the foliage, we'll say, is very... It's very much more full. It The herbivore island is kind of a bad example, because I can't really... Oh, well, actually, here, let me do this. I'm not actually going to be playing on this after this, uh... World, so I've just been spawning all the shit in that I need. Um, yeah, this is kind of... Oh, wait, well... I could have just walked up here. I don't know what I'm doing. You can kind of see if you're just standing here on the ground. Yeah, this is a very bad place to actually show this off anyway. But the grass is very tall. And I'll show off more stuff of once we're not here anymore. What the hell? Oh, well, there's another thing. Another thing for creatures, besides having a fantastically improved AI, which I will get into in a little bit, you can now find baby creatures just wandering the map, and so far I haven't been into the ocean really to see if there's uh, like baby sharks or baby mosasaurs or anything yet, so I can't really speak for that, but so far it seems like any land-based creature or flying-based creature judging by the trailer for Survival Ascended, can have just a baby creature uh, wandering around it. And the way to tame these baby creatures is to either tame the parent, which you can locate with that uh, heart with a dinosaur face in it above them, or you can either tame the parent or you can kill the parent. And then after that's done, you can just walk up to the baby and claim it like you would a normal baby creature. Um, but if the parent's still alive, you won't be able to do anything with it. Or if the parent's still alive and wild, you won't be able to do anything. Uh, the other thing that has been massively improved is the creature AI. Also, for, for babies, you can find babies in sets of 1, 2, 3. As you can see, I got three baby trikes right here, all the same level 80, all the uh, child of this guy right here. There's a baby stego right there. Um, I'm not sure what the rarity of these babies spawning is, because it's uh, it's kind of hard to tell, because some creatures obviously spawn a lot more frequently than others. Uh, so I don't know if the rarity of babies spawning is uniform across every creature, or if each creature has its own like individual chance to have a baby spawn with it. Um, I have uh, I've seen everything from baby dono, baby dodos, baby compies to baby rexes and uh, baby spino. So 
do with that what you will. The other thing is that Dino AI... Hold on, let me, uh... So I don't die right now. God, and then... Infinite stat. Nope, that's not how you spell stats. Because right, I'm just explaining and going over shit right now. Hi, Theri. So I spawned you in for this. Come here. So. Come here, you. I can just walk because you're just going to follow me. So, if a creature feels like or can tell it's going to get trapped in a specific area, it's going to avoid either going into that area altogether or it's going to avoid staying in that area for too long. If the creature is actively attacking you, you can kind of trick it a little bit. So like here, see, it's a... Uh, there you go, so now it's stuck. But it's only stuck because I'm in god mode and infinite stats and I got out anyway because I had this pillar in the middle but whatever so yeah it's it is much more much more difficult to actually okay you need to fuck off yep go away um trapping dinos or tramping land-based dinos at least has become much much more difficult to do i'm gonna move the baryonyx away from you um so far the only way that i've seen to um actually trap something so it can be tamed easily is with the use of bear traps and obviously that still has kind of its risks the best, like, pseudo solution, I guess we'll say, I found so far is to have one side of a trap only put up. So don't make, like, a box or anything. Just do, do, something, like, do something like this and then put a bear trap down, like, right here in the middle of it. Once whatever creature it is gets trapped, you can uh, then finish building the trap around it. It works well with using the metal billboards as well, especially since metal metal structures can't be damaged by like 90% of the creatures in this game. I think the only thing that can damage it is going to be the... I think it's just the Titanosaur, actually. Uh, so that's fantastic. So, trapping is extremely difficult to do now. There's not really... Uh, there's not really a solution to that. Some structures as well don't... Uh, don't trigger the wild creatures like a new and improved AI anymore. And there's also been some new issues specifically with the Baryonyx so far, but I'll go over that in just a moment. Um, additionally, some of the kind of solutions people were finding have already been patched, so they're no longer solutions anymore. One of those, which is why I used pillars to, to demonstrate this, is that creatures were not actually registering or recognizing pillars as structures that they could be trapped by or they were just they were treating pillars just as as if they weren't there so they'd walk straight into them get stuck and you could trap trap them easily that way however as you just saw with the theory that i tried to trap a it just kind of hovered over the trap but you did see that it was just avoiding getting stuck in the trap at all if it could so you can obviously just like get something to fall into a drop trap just by letting it beat on you until it's in the trap and stuck there because if it's actively attacking you it will still go into the trap so long as it's, so long as it's hitting you but if it's just chasing you it will avoid any trap like that uh so yeah that's kind of kind of an issue uh let's see baby's done camera done building trapping fantastic um, let's see, so I kind of showed it a second ago, you may have seen it in the distance, but most textures, rocks, trees, grass, obviously, this game looks fucking beautiful now, um, but metal specifically is the biggest one that I can think of, here's one, uh, it has a much different texture now, it's a nice texture, but it's very, very diff different from what it used to be in a survival evolved so a lot of stuff has new and improved textures like this as well obviously you've seen that all of the building structures look well 
if you're very familiar with Survival Evolved, you've probably noticed that the uh, stone structures look very different from what they did like did before. Um, and all of the creature textures are much more clean than they were before. I've had so, so few less um, actual, like, texture issues with texture issues with this game so far, um, even with modded creatures. The other thing that I forgot to mention for baby dinos is modded creatures can also spawn with baby versions of themselves. So all of the additions ascended dinos, dino mods that I have in, those can spawn with baby creatures with them as well. So far I've only seen baby ceratosaurs, but I haven't really seen many of the other creatures, so I don't know if that's part of the game. Like, if it, was, if it was something wildcard implemented that's just, like, a part of the game, so any creature that spawns, regardless if it's modded or not, can have a baby creature spawn with it. Or if that's something the mod developer of the Ark Editions uh, Ascended mods included in making the mods. If it is, in either, in either case, actually, good on wildcard or good on the mod developer, because it's fantastic, and I'm very happy and excited. Uh, the other thing. This game does have, so far a couple of performance issues fog and clouds specifically can cause some frame dropping to just it's just going to depend on your system that you're using if you're playing on the uh xbox series s the uh smaller white one the all digital one or the all digital ps5 uh, two commands that you can run to get your game to run a bit be a bit better um, or that you can run anyway just to improve your gameplay is r dot volume trick fog I have to make sure I spell this right and then space zero and then that will remove all fog from the world which I wish I I don't I don't even know if that was no I'm pretty sure it was a command in survival evolve but it never worked for me so fantastic and then the other command you can do you can do you can do is r dot hold on i have to r dot volume trick cloud zero so you can see on the outside of my screen there all the clouds and now there's no clouds so the cloud one really kind of ruins the scenery of the game i feel like the fog one while it does also improve the performance of the game um, on the mountains, it makes the mountains playable areas as well, because otherwise you can't see. So it's not really worth going up there if you can't see anything. At least that's what I feel like. So I always have fog disabled whenever I play. <coughs> uh, some other stuff. Oh, also to uh, enable console commands, my cats are going nuts. Is right here. So in settings under advanced console access, just turn that on. And that's it. Uh, so there's a couple of other things I want to go show off. Actually, there's only one other thing, really quick, but I have to fly over to the one location that I've actually remembered. So uh, the island map has changed pretty significantly, as you can see just looking under me here. This is Stonehenge the Stonehenge area of the map, and it looks massively different than it did in Survival Evolved. There's obviously these pillars right here um, on the beach and in the river itself that were not there before. And then additionally, right here, originally in Survival Evolved, this beach just went all the way around without interruption, but now there's this whole like rock spire thing here that was never there before. So I don't know. I haven't Oh, there's also this right here, this rock spire little thing here on the end of this little outlet. Was not there previously. Um, I'm, there's been a lot of stuff like that. I can't really go and point out everything because I haven't fully explored this map yet. But there's a lot of new changes and just new additions to the map that were not just existing before. And it's very nice. It's a very, very beautiful map. Um, let's see, is there anything else I want to mention really quick? Not 
Not really. The the building and the trapping thing was the two primary things that I wanted to go over here, aside from just the general setting explanations. Um, oh, also, binoculars. So tech binoculars. They are... These become available... At, they're a tech engram, so you have to defeat one of the bosses to actually unlock them. Unfortunately, you only unlock them from defeating the Alpha Overseer. There's no other way to get these right now. I don't know if that's going to change when the other story arcs come out, and the other, and therefore the other bosses come out, but uh, so far, right now, the Alpha Overseer is the only way to get these tech binoculars. And these are just a integrated Super Spyglass or Awesome Spyglass mod, if you're familiar with either of those. As you can see, I'm just looking at the Baryonics here. I'm not even zoomed in on it at all. Um, but all of its stats are pulled up off to the right right there. You can kind of see it. I don't know how well it's going to show up in the video, but for, say, the health stat right there, there's the uh, current health, max health, and then in parentheses, there's three numbers there. There's the 53, there's the 0, and then there's the 9. And the 53 is the stat points the Baryonyx had, had when it was tamed, when it tamed out, so... Whatever the wild stat points are, and then the extra levels that it got from being tamed, 53 points into its uh, health. And then I've put 9 level up points into its health as well. So similarly, you, it applies that for all the stats, and then you can see its uh, number color codes there at the bottom as well. Also, at the very bottom, you can see any mutations it has if it's a creature that you've been mutating. Obviously, this is just a wild Baryonyx that I force tamed. Um, and that's it. The other big change is going to be the map. Oh, I have my little marker there, too. So, the map has changed a couple ways. As, as with Survival Evolved, you can hit the select button and bring up the map this way. Um, and you'll see yourself. The player location on the map seems like by default it's turned on, and I did not see a setting in the settings when I was going through them to actually turn it off, so I think it's just on always by default, and there might not be a way to change it. Maybe on Nitrado servers you can turn it off, but I, I don't really know why you would. Um, and then you can do map markers as well. Additionally, if you go into your inventory and hit the select button once, and you have a uh, much bigger version of the map here that you can scroll around with and whatever. <clears throat> if you want to place a waypoint, uh, you can... If you want to place a waypoint, it'll place a waypoint wherever you currently are, and you can just hit the waypoints tab right here. You can do... Well, I don't need this one for home anymore either, so I can get rid of that. But hit the plus, and you can edit the waypoint name. The coordinates you can't change. You can change, I lied. I don't know what I'm talking about. Override height, I don't really know what that does. Um, yeah, not sure. And then icon just changes what the icon on the map will be when you actually do it. You can change the color of it, you can change... I didn't mean to back out of that. You can change the color of it, you can have the text shown, which is just the name of it, and and yeah, that's it. The other thing you can do with the map is, if you're on it, wherever you put your cursor, press X, no, there you go, okay, I don't know why that was not working before. So just hit X anywhere on the map, you might have to be zoomed in actually, I don't know if that's actually a thing. Um, so, right here. And then just select one of these. So, there you go. And it'll show up on the map just very briefly. Then once that fills up, it'll disappear again. Um, additionally, for the map, as you can see at the bottom right there, latitude and longitude is just displayed on there. It's just an active GPS. Also, the map becomes a little bit see-through when you're uh, running and you just have this select... Uh, or when you're moving in, you just have the select map open. Um, so yeah, the GPS is no longer an engram that you can use. It's just integrated fully into the map itself. Very nice, very helpful. 
Is there anything else I'm forgetting? I don't... I probably am. But I can't think of what I could be forgetting right now. So, for the time being at least, that's going to be it for this video. Um, there's a lot more changes in this game. I'm going to be going through and just doing quick guides for all of the caves again. <laughs> I'm okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to be doing guides for the caves again. Just for Survival Ascended and with just a mostly vanilla character, at least we'll say. Obviously, I have increased movement speed because I do have that setting turned on. Uh, official servers, I don't believe, have that turned on, though, so I will keep that in mind. However, without further ado... I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about Survival Evolved, or Survival Ascended, I mean, rather, now, uh, please just put them in the comics and ask, comics, comments, and ask at your discretion. I will do my best to answer everything. And for now, I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate it. It means a lot to me. And I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!